You know, I, I love hearing from you <clears throat> when you speak as passionately as you do about pushing back against what's going on. Um, the the gentleman we have as a live guest right now is is perhaps one of my favorite people. And unabashedly, I fell in love with him when he pushed back against his son's school board and would go and speak out against the absolute ridiculousness going on in his son's school. And he was outstanding. And then he galvanized this thing in Florida where pe people who wanted to get a medical exemption could all gather and medical professionals were on hand to help sign those. It was huge. We had him on for that. Now he's running for Congress. And I want to welcome Martin Hyde back to the program. I think you're outstanding, but why you're on today, sir, has to do with you really ticking off your homeowners association. I can't wait to hear the story. <laughs> you know, it's not hard to tick them off, is it? <laughs> An American flag anymore is offensive. Well, you know, I was the, yeah, I could have put a nativity scene up there. That would have got them because as godless as they are, right? But, um, no, this this was um, this was fun because um, what happened was uh, you know we put Christmas lights out every year and uh, people have their Christmas message and sometimes it's uh, one of joy and one of hope and uh, we had a terrible year and uh, this was my message about uh, where we need to go and so uh, let's go Brandon um, you know is a euphemism for some people profanity towards Sleepy Joe but. To me, it's a reflection of the fact that the media in this country think we're that stupid. Yes. Um, you remember what happened there, NBC trying to tell us uh, uh, on some level that uh, we were hearing something different to what we actually heard. And so I had this idea, I, I, you know, I was looking online, I saw these little letters about nine inches high um, that lit up like Christmas lights and you could buy individual letters. So. You know, I went along on my fingers and spelled them out and ordered them online and, and they arrived and I stuck them up on my balcony on the first floor of my house. And this isn't exactly Park Avenue, so not that many people go by, but as by coincidence, per what you were talking about just now, people migrating, for some reason, every liberal in Christendom came and moved into my neighborhood. There's only 15 houses here and 13 of them are woke. Oh, no. So I put it up there. Um, uh, I turn the lights on. No sooner had I turned the lights on than uh, I get an email from the homeowners association telling me to, uh, or demanding that I take them down. And if I don't, they're going to find me 150 bucks a day. Uh, which I thought they obviously don't know me and they don't understand the concept of not poking a bit. So I figured I'd find a way to uh, to tell them no in more calculated terms than just help no. So. Uh, I, uh, I had a, uh, a new sign commissioned. I had it made by a, <laughs> uh, a firm up in Clearwater, and uh, we spelled out hashtag FJB, and uh, we put them, you know, these are 10 times the size that they were. If you go to my Facebook page, you can see we had a lighting ceremony. We had a big crowd out there, and uh, they all had to go to their safe place when we did that. We had my big campaign bus out there. Um, but... <laughs> You know, it was fun, Wendy, and, and, and then, you know, this is one of the great ironies, isn't it? I mean, you spend a lot of time talking to people. One of the things that's been surgically removed from most Democrats is a sense of humor. Correct. They don't have one. I, I agree 100%. And it's like, wait a minute, you guys were able to say whatever you want to say. And what we're saying is a clean version of the naughty version that we really all feel in our hearts profoundly. And you sound like you live in a neighborhood much like mine, where my Christmas lights were sliced. Somebody took a, a knife or shears or whatever and cut my Christmas lights. They defaced my back the blue signs. I mean, it's complete lunacy. Well, it is, but it's funny, you know, I, I publish my cell phone number on my website and on my Facebook page so that the, the braver ones of them can call me. And they're always surprised when I answer. And it's even better when I don't get to it and they leave me a voicemail because I always call them back. And uh, you know, some of the hatred and some of the profanity um, talk about, you know, wash your mouth out with soap. Um, but you know, these people would have no standards if it wasn't for double standards. And, and mostly, that's what 
you're about. It's certainly what I'm about. Um, I would lead well alone if they leave me well alone, but they won't. But, you know, I don't need government to tell me what to do, and I certainly don't need some woke neighbor um, telling me that uh, 15 genders and that uh, critical race theory is what my kids should be learning at school or uh, or any other bit of nonsense. If they left me well alone, I'd leave them well alone. The difference is that the silent majority is no longer silent, and uh, we're no longer going to take this. Um, you know, maybe uh, January the 6th, they didn't understand. That was an indication of how people feel about their nonsense and about the fact that we know their game now. We know what they're up to. They try to steal elections. They stole an election. We're not going to let it happen again. And so uh, as much as uh, I don't want to spoil the day for the kids waiting for Santa, I'm just really excited about New Year's Eve when we turn the page. And uh, this time next year, we're going to be standing here with a smile as uh, as, as wide as the Brooklyn Bridge. It's going to be fantastic. Liberal tears are going to be flowing and uh, we're going to take America back. I, I love everything that you just said. So I have a two-pronged question. One, is the sign still up? I think I know the answer. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, it'll be up until such time as I get bored of it, which might be never. <laughs> um, 150 bucks a day, they can find me, they can sue me, they got due process. You know, it'd be like Jesse Smollett. They'll be litigating this by the time I'm still dead. <laughs> I love it. And the second part of the question is, you know, you went from a dad who was ticked off. You came to this country. You love this country. You embrace the Constitution. You understand what it says. And then you went from being a thorn in the side of a very, um, ugh, to call them liberal on your school board is, is just a gross understatement. But you decided to take a step and run for office. Tell everybody about that. Well, yeah, I did, because, you know, if not me, then who? Um, one of the problems we've got to, in my opinion, in this country is that the conservative representation uh, that we should have in the House, we don't have. Um, probably a third of the Republican Party in Congress are more like liberals than, uh, than liberals themselves. So I, I, we need America first type candidates. We need people who've read the Constitution and, and believe in it and don't want to fiddle with it, whether it be the Second Amendment, the First Amendment, Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Fourteenth Amendment, or otherwise. So I chose to run because it's an expensive thing. You get a lot of wax on the way. I had the resources. I have the resources to be able to do it. Um, and I don't mind a fight um, when it's worth having. You know, I don't go around swinging at people uh, just for the sake of it. Um, but this is a fight worth having. It's the greatest country on earth. But one thing to remember, every great civilization from the Romans, the Greeks, British Empire, from where I came from, they all destroyed themselves by stopping doing what made them great. America's at risk of doing that. And I'm here to push back and say, let's, uh, let's, let's make America great again. Let's keep it great. And that means having true patriots, but more particularly people that believe in the Constitution uh, in Congress and doing something in Congress instead of sitting there home holding hands. I agree. You know, and I take great joy, and I think you do as well. I like walking through my neighborhood as one of the lone conservatives and of obviously a very public figure and seeing my neighbors sneer at me. I don't know about you, Mark. Well, I do know about you because you feel the same way. It's energizing, isn't it? That doesn't hurt. Um, it's fueling, and I thank them for that. I, I, you know, it's, your, your listeners get courage from you, and I hope to a limited extent on a more modest scale. People get it from me. You know, we have a, an iconic bridge here in Sarasota, the Ringling Bridge that goes over to Longbow Key. And I walk it most days, somewhat slowly at my age, but I walk it. And I always wear a provocative T-shirt, not just Let's Go Brandon. I've got some new campaign ones that say it's the Bill of Rights, not the Bill of Feelings. Um, and, you know, a significant number of the people, you know, get their social distancing when they see me because they run the other side of the street. Um, <laughs> but there's also people that just love it. Yes. You know, there are people that just feel like, hey, there's someone who's saying what I want to say. Right. And, and, and more people need to do that. That's why President Trump got elected. And uh, I believe it's why we've got a shot, because uh, we're saying what people want to say. Yes, and he started something. He started something. 63 million Americans joined together separately to do something big in 2016. And his, I think, regardless of what happens with him, we're on quite quite a role. I feel good about it. And I love your optimism, right? What's there not to be optimistic about? 
way and looking back is for suckers like regrets, right? You know, we're looking forward. Uh, we can't do anything about what uh, what happened. Relitigating it won't change it. Uh, the dark ages that we were plunged into by Joe and uh, his uh, his people. You know, the good news, and I keep telling people this, the good news is once people have had a taste of this, even the wokesters, they're not going to want to bring these people back for a long, long time. So uh, maybe every few years we need to have a reminder. Uh, we had a shocking reminder over the last 11 months. And uh, I believe also that people are going to face the fact that it's not about President Trump, it's about them. They need to get out, they need to vote, and, and, and to use the old Democrat vote, uh, you know, then, yeah, but, you know, vote often. Um, <laughs> you know, they, we, we, they, they play for that, you know, we, we play flag football, they play contact. Oh, we should get out there. Let's stomp the uh, let's stomp the quarterback into the ground next November. Uh, let's finish this thing. And uh, I'm not ashamed of uh, of anything that I ever say because it's it's what I believe. I believe a lot of other people agree with me. And uh, the message is, is one of seasonal cheer. Um, it has been a sucky year, but uh, 2022 is shaping up to be a fantastic one. I love it. How do people find out more about you, Martin Hyde? Well, electmartinhyde.com, not the cleverest name, but, uh, you know, it's all on there. And uh, Sarasota Citizen Martin Hyde on Facebook. If you're not in Facebook jail, we have a lot of fun stuff on there, including videos of our unveiling the other night. That was uh, that was pretty cool. We had uh, some uh, some good speakers and a lot of fun. Um, oh, and, of course, you know, we, we support you guys, even in the, the woke world that you live up there. Uh, we're fighting for you, too. Uh, right Florida is a free state. Um <clears throat> But, uh, you know, we, we dream of the day when the, all of the United States are free. I love it. What size uh, shirt do you wear? <laughs> it depends whether I've just eaten or not. I, I, let, let's, let's call it a, a good, a, a generous XL. Got it. All right. We'll check your mail. Martin Hyde running for Congress and hopefully doing what we all need to be doing, standing up, fighting back. Thank you, sir. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful one. And I appreciate you, my friend. And to you and all your listeners, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you all. Take bye -bye. care. Bye-bye.